Hey everybody, Joe Lowry, what a day, happy Thursday, thirsty Thursday out there, almost the weekend, just one more day to go, and today, October 26th, recognizing the favored autumn decoration, today is National Pumpkin Day, and that's right, as we all know, pumpkins are used in a variety of recipes, some are used in competitions as well as festivals, but most popular usage is for carving out, so enjoy National Pumpkin Day. Well, a bit of bad news out of Foxborough today is New England Patriots linebacker Dante Hightower who tore his pectoral muscle, is now listed out for the season. This is a big blow to the Patriots' defense, who are thin to begin with. It'll be very interesting to see how defensive coach Matt Patricia and head coach Bill Belichick go about the rest of the season without one of their best defensive players. Big blow to the Patriots here. Patriots host the Chargers this Sunday in Foxborough. Kickoff time is at 1 p.m. And both the Celtics and Bruins are in action tonight. Bruins host the Sharks at the Garden. The Celtics are in Milwaukee taking on the Bucks. Both games start at 7 p.m. And word out of the Bronx today, Yankee skipper Joe Girardi out as manager of the New York Yankees. Girardi was at the helm in the Big Apple for 10 seasons. He's reportedly been told that he will not be returning. Wow, okay, is that a fancy way of saying you're fired? I don't know, but Joe Girardi out as Yankee skipper. And some are calling last night's World Series game as one for the ages. Not sure about that. I've seen better games, but either way, the Houston Astros defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers in 11 innings by the score of 7-6. Courtesy of George Springer's two-run homer in the 11th inning, the series is now tied at one game apiece. Game three heads back tomorrow in Houston. And as you know, what a day has been talking about the highly anticipated Amazon Q headquarters that is being heavily sought after. Cities from, Bo cities from Boston, L.A., and beyond comprised mostly of the over 260 bids they did receive. However, none went from Mexico, and Amazon has gone on to say that there probably would have been a language barrier if there is one. But Amazon did shed some light on the numerous amount of proposals from Canada. That's right. Toronto, Vancouver, Calgary, Halifax, Montreal, and Ottawa have all submitted formal proposals for the new facility called HQ2. It will cost at least $5 billion to construct and create as many as 50,000 high-paying jobs. The real question is, though, will Amazon take those bids seriously? Well, they do, they do want the so-called HQ2 to be out of the country as well. Experts say Canada could be an attractive option given both its ability to bring in foreign workers and the uncertainty surrounding America's immigration policy. Now, could be an attractive option given to um, Canada, especially the visa systems, because in Canada, their immigration system only allows a two-week turnaround for tech workers to obtain visas, and that is incredibly welcoming. The Toronto region published a 200-page bid for the proposal for its headquarters. It highlighted Canada's immigration policy as a major draw, of course, and calculated that Amazon could save up, get a load of this, $600 million per year from Canada's universal health care system. Folks, it appears Canada is on the table with Amazon. The list will be narrowed down. The next phase um, go, happens in three months from now when Amazon will announce the following ranking cities. Well, you know, in the 69 years that CBS Evening News has been on the air, only a select few have served as a full-time host. And now a former anchor of Channel 7 Boston is set to follow in the footsteps of Walter Cronkite, Dan Rather, and Katie Couric. No, it's not yours truly, but it's Jeff Glore. That's right, a CBS News correspondent since 20, 2007 will take over as full-time host of CBS Evening News. Glore will fill the vacancy left by Scott Pelley, who was relieved of his anchor duties back in June. Again, Jeff Glore, Channel 7, is your new CBS Evening News host. And even though this is a couple of days old, I would be remiss if I did not mention this, but actor Robert Guillaume, known best for starring roles on TV Soap and Benson, died on Tuesday. Guillaume's widow Donna Brown Guillaume told the Associated Press that the actor died Tuesday morning in Los Angeles. He was battling prostate cancer. Robert Guillaume also served in the U.S. Army before he started acting professionally. That's good to hear. Robert Guillaume was just 89 years old. Well, news does certainly travel fast these days. Early today on the E! Network show Daily Pop, WWE superstars Nikki and Brie Bella were special guests. And as we all know, Nikki is currently battling for the Mirabal Trophy on Dancing with the Stars over on ABC. But her twin sister Brie, who is currently retired supposedly, she's currently married to WWE superstar Daniel Bryan. They most recently had their first baby. Now, spoke about a possible in-ring return here. Get a look at this. During this segment, one of the hosts asked Brie what it's different about now since giving birth. And Brie went on to answer saying how she's used to not having to worry about what to eat and so forth, and that's all changed. She then alludes to the fact that she's been working in and out of a wrestling ring. And then she went on to say how her muscle tone has weakened when she was describing how she felt after attempting her finishing move, the missile drop kick off the top rope. That's something that would not be normally attempted and not making a comeback, right, folks? Well, anyways, Brie announced her retirement shortly after finding out she and her husband were expecting their first child, so the cat may be out of the bag, so to speak. Nikki and Brie Bella could be suited for a major in-ring return just in time for WrestleMania 
34. Anyways, folks, you got to check out my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash Joe Lowry. What a day. It's free. All you have to do is hit subscribe. Did I mention it's free? Tell your friends, your brothers, your sisters, everybody like that. Don't forget, folks, North Wichita High Class Reunion coming up Friday, November 24th. You got to get your tickets, folks. Just get them. Paul Karras got his. He put them online. Anyways, check out their Facebook page, NQHS87. You can buy your tickets on there and all sorts of information provided as well. Folks, enjoy your Thursday Thursday. I'm Joe Lowry. What a day.